Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, me neighbor, good morning. The how everybody to do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the night, through the night. So it's a challenging day. Before He take me away, we have to be grind. Success on the mind. Good morning, me never good morning. The how everybody be do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you. Pleasant morning, brothers and sisters in Christ, and welcome to another edition of Morning Prayer brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of Belize. Today is Wednesday, the ninth day of October in 2024, and far as I can tell outside, there's an orange sun coming up from the east, but a tinge of gray all around. I was just informed that there's a power outage in Belize City or parts of Belize City, so we might have a couple people who are unable to join us this morning. I also need to apologize for yesterday. I hope that you saw my message, but we were having some technical difficulties with the broadcasting program that we have here um, on our computer. But praise Jesus, we took the time yesterday to make sure that was up and running, and now we are back in the swing of things. We're going to kick things off this morning with this one entitled, Awake My Soul and With the Sun. Let's have a listen.
one there indeed. That one, Awake My Soul and With The Sun. Let's continue then getting our words here up on screen for today, October the 19th, 2024. And let's see if I can make that happen here in 3, 2, and 1. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Words from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 20. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 35 using versicle 2. Hear us, O Lord, for your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our Savior, and praise your name forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our prayer of intent. Father, we come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship bear witness to your peace and saving power. Through your spirit may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. Our first canticle for this morning is the canticle De Venite, which is based on Psalm 95, verse 1 through to 8. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, the, the Venite can be found on page 34. O oh, come, let us sing out to the Lord. Let us shout in triumph to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving and cry out to him joyfully in psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth, and the peaks of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, and he made it. His hand molded dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he himself is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. If only you would hear his voice today, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. At this time, we pause to call to mind those things that in thought, word, or deed we may have committed, things that might have been displeasing to Almighty God, things that might have been unjust to our neighbors, or things perhaps that might have been unkind even to our very selves. For these times and for these moments, Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Together we pray. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life everlasting. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms 121, 122, and 123, and leading us in the reading of the Psalm this morning in honor of the birthday of Mr. Lyle Williams, whose birthday was yesterday. Reading for us this morning is Miss Arlette Gomez. Let's have a listen. Good morning. The Psalms for today are Psalms 121. 122 and 123. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved, and he who watches over you will not fall asleep. Behold, he who keeps watch over Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord himself watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand, so that the sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. It is he who shall keep you safe. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. Psalm 122 I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. 
Now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is at unity with itself, to which the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, the assembly of Israel, to praise the name of the Lord. For there are the thrones of judgment, thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Pray be you, peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For my brethren and companions' sake, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Psalm 123 To you I lift up my eyes, to you enthroned in the heavens, as the eyes of servant look at the hand of their masters, and the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he show us his mercy. Have mercy upon us, O Lord, have mercy, for we have had more than enough of contempt, too much of the scorn of the indolent rich, and of the derision of the proud. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. Amen. We want to thank Ms. Arlet for leading us in the reading for this morning. Our second canticle for this morning is the canticle, The Song of Christ's Glory, which is based on Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 11. If you are following along in your books of common prayer, we are on page 54. Christ Jesus was in the form of God, but he did not cling to equality with God. He emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, and was born in the likeness of men. Being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Up next, we have our Bible lesson, <clears throat> pardon me, and our Bible lesson comes from the Gospel according to Luke, Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through to 17. Let's have a listen. Today's reading comes from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through 17. After Jesus had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. A centurion there had a slave whom he valued highly and who was ill and close to death. When he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to him, asking him to come and heal his slave. When they came to Jesus, they appealed to him earnestly, saying, He is worthy of having you to do this for him, for he loves our people and it is he who built our synagogue for us. And Jesus went with them. But when he was not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Therefore, I did not presume to come to you, but only speak the word and let my servant be healed. For I also am a man set under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd that followed him, he said, I tell you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. When those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. Soon afterwards, he went to a, call, to a town called Nain, and his disciples and a large crowd went with him. As he approached the gate of the town, a man who had died was being carried out. He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow, and with her was a large crowd from the town. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Then he came forward and touched the buyer, 
and the bearers stood still. And he said, Young man, I say to you, rise. The dead man sat up and began to speak, and Jesus gave him to his mother. Fear seized all of them, and they glorified God, saying, A great prophet has risen among us, and God has looked favorable on his people. This word about him spread throughout Judea and all the surrounding country. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We want to thank Miss Carol for leading us in the reading for this morning. And of course, she's reading in honor of the birthday of her brother, Mr. Lyle Williams. We want to wish Mr. Lyle a happy belated birthday. Our word should be back here up on screen. This one I'm reading from the gospel according to Luke chapter 7, verse 1 through to 17. And this is the witness of the centurion. Now, what is happening is that the witness of Jesus, or to Jesus, how can I say it? The witness of the people for Jesus or towards Jesus, because what's happening is that Jesus is now gaining popularity. And he's not only gaining popularity with the Jews, he's also gaining popularity with the Gentiles. And in this instance, it is a centurion who is the one that is um, going to witness to the fact that the authority of Jesus is something real. And I like it. So we find Jesus, yes, after preaching in the hearing of the people, he enters into Capernaum. And after the Sermon on the Plain, yes, Luke chapter 6, verse 20 to 49, he comes to his city of residence, yeah, Capernaum. And this is the location now. Um, the location then for the Sermon on the Plain is not far from Capernaum. And this is the location now where he's going to meet with some non-Jewish people. And the first he encounters is a centurion. And the centurion appears to be a devout, kind, and humble man. But yet at the same time, he was a Roman centurion so he was not only a gentile but he was a roman soldier and he was an instrument of israel's oppression or at least that's what centurions were seen as because they were the arm of the law for the romans but interestingly enough this centurion has faith in jesus he has heard the stories he probably has seen a couple of things and he comes looking for favor or he sends word looking for favor the centurion had a slave, more than likely a Jewish individual, whom he valued highly. And this slave was ill and close to death. And when he heard about Jesus, he sent some of the Jewish elders. Now, notice that the man has great authority. The man is a Roman soldier. The man has slaves that work under him. And the man is sending Jewish elders. Yeah? It could be that he's sending Jewish elders because he's a Roman soldier and they don't want to defy him. But later on, we hear why the Jewish elders came. Yeah, so they send the Jewish elders to Jesus, well, the centurion does, and he says, you know what, go and appeal. And they did come. They came appealing to Jesus earnestly. And not only did they come and say, listen, this Roman centurion have a slave who is sick, would you come and see him? But they, te they testified on behalf of the centurion. This man is worthy of having you do this for him, Lord, because he loves our people. He works with us. It is he who built our synagogue for us. So this centurion clearly had a compassionate heart and a soft spot for the Jews. He was not your typical run-of-the-mill Roman soldier. He had an unusual attitude towards his slave. Under Roman law, a master had the right to kill his slave, and it was expected that he would do so if the slave became so ill or injured to the point that he couldn't work. But instead of following Roman law and killing his near to the point of death slave, this centurion wanted to heal him. And the elders who appealed on his behalf also testified to the fact that this centurion seems to have a soft spot for the Jews. The centurion did not think himself worthy of a personal meeting with Jesus, which is why he asked the elders to come. And perhaps he thought that Jesus would not want to meet with a Gentile like himself. So he sent his Jewish representatives. And the leaders thought the man was a worthy man because they, they pleaded, you know. They, we come to Jesus directly with our, with, with, with our request, yeah. But we come with a, as a representative of this man because we think that we are good enough to come to you, but he doesn't think he is. And imagine, it was a Jewish leadership that was, it for the most part, unworthy of the presence of Jesus because of how they behaved. But none of that mattered. It simply suggested that the centurion was a God-fearing, a Gentile man who had embraced Israel's God. 
And that's a beautiful thing. So the centurion sends to tell Jesus, you know what? Um, yeah, my servant is sick. Please come if you could. And while Jesus is there and he hears the story and he decides, okay, let me go with them then since this man is worthy. But when they were not too far from the centurion's house, the centurion sent his friend and said to Jesus, Lord, you know what? Don't trouble yourself. I, I, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, you know? I don't I did not presume to come to you because I didn't deem myself as worthy. But if you if you speak the word where you are, you could let my servant be healed. No, I don't think the centurion was embarrassed of the condition of his house. You know? I think it's more out of respect. Don't come and defile yourself, Jewish teacher, by bringing yourself into my house. Because my house, I'm a Gentile, I'm a Roman centurion. People are going to talk bad about you, Lord. Don't come. You don't need to come. Besides that, I have enough faith that from where you are, you could heal. And it's interesting because Jesus did not hesitate to go to the centurion's house. And we half wish the centurion would have allowed him to come so we could see what would have happened when he get to the centurion's house. It was against Jewish customs. Yeah? It was against Jewish customs for a rabbi to enter into the house of a Roman official. And that's where the, the centurion's objection come from. But it was not against the law of God. Because God doesn't have a law that says you could go here or you could go there. Or you could yeah, go to the next place. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. It was the rabbinic writings that said that the dwelling places of Gentiles were unclean. And that proper Jews should not enter there. And it goes to show two things. It goes to show one, that the centurion was aware of the rabbinic laws. And did not want to defile the teacher. But that Jesus was willing to go to his house anyway, meant Jesus didn't really care about these man-made rules that were imposed upon the people. Hmm? And the centurion knew that it might be a problem for a prominent rabbi to come to his house, which is why he sent the leaders to meet him. And when Jesus was almost there, this remarkable centurion man yeah, said, you know what? Mm -mm. Don't defile yourself by coming to my house. I have enough faith that if you proclaim healing from where you are, Strong faith and great humility. That's what the centurion was showing. These are two features of his character that, that, that blends in him and meets with such grace and harmony that he had won the opinion of the, of, the, of the Jewish leadership and now was winning the opinion of Jesus as well. Hmm? And, and the centurion fully understood Jesus' healing power. Say the word from where you are. He recognized it was not a magic trick that required the presence of the magician. He knew that Jesus had true authority that he could command things to be done and unseen without his immediate presence. He showed great faith in Jesus' word. He understood that Jesus could heal with just a word that he didn't even need to touch. Hey, that's big. And this, this centurion shows his humility in the presence of Jesus. But he also acknowledges before Jesus, this humility I have before you is because I consider you to be greater than me. Because I am a great man. And he tells Jesus how great he is. You know? This is my military chain of command. This is how I give orders and people unquestioningly, 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 I hope I get it right, unquestioningly obey. But even though he had all of this authority, he considered himself less than the authority of Jesus. And when Jesus hears all of this, when he heard this, he's amazed at the centurion. And he turns to the crowd following him and he says to the crowd, he said, this man, in all of Israel, I have not found faith like this. Now that hurt. Because the Jewish leadership just come on behalf of the centurion. And Jesus is saying, in all of Israel, including those Jewish leaders, he has not seen Faith such as he has found in this centurion. <laughs> Them is fighting words, Jesus. But it was true. The Jews had rejected him time and time and again. The Jews had doubted him time and time and again. The Jews were plotting to entrap him because they didn't believe. And here was a Roman soldier who believed with such faith that he knew that Jesus didn't have to be in his presence. For the miracle to happen. And those with Jesus. Jesus sends them away. He doesn't come to the man's house. And when they get there. They find the slave healed. 
and the powerful line, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. Words that, as a good Catholic girl, I have said so many times in the Eucharist, you know. We say it in the Eucharist, when the bread and the wine is offered, you know. Lord, I am not worthy that thou should enter under my roof, but only speak the words. And then we say, my sh and your servant shall be healed. Hmm? Because we understand that unworthy as we are, the Lord still loves us to the point that he cares for us with compassion and mercy. We understand that there is nothing we have or could do that will ever be enough to offer up before the Lord to make us deserve him of all that he gives to us. And it's that humility that we're supposed to exercise. And the centurion shows us a perfect example of just that. You know, as a man with authority, whose subordinates obeyed him, who had authority over many, he recognized the authority of even the utterance of Christ. Not even his presence, just the utterances of Christ. That he knew that Jesus didn't have to be there to heal him. May our feet be as strong as that of the centurion. May our humility match or equal his. May we remember that God is a God of possibilities and Christ can do all things in all circumstances, no matter how impossible it may seem. Amen. Let us continue then with the profession of our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. As our Savior has taught us, so let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us a day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> Pardon me. <clears throat> for our suffrages this morning, we use suffrage C, which is on page 44. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. Our first collet for this morning is the collet for Pentecost, proper 22. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid, and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Together we say a call it for our young persons. God our Father, you see our children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today in our World Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the people of King Man Reef and in our Ecumenical Cycle of Prayer, we pray for our sisters and brothers who are members of the Spanish Reformed Episcopal Church. <clears throat> and now let us turn to our own prayers 
of personal intercessions and thanksgiving. This morning, we would like to extend birthday greetings to the following individuals. In memoria, we remember Mr. John Zavali, who celebrated a birthday on Monday. And celebrating a birthday yesterday was Miss Sonia Ber Phillips, Miss Patricia Willisey, Mrs. Anita Kinch, and Mr. Lyle Williams. Celebrating a birthday today is Reverend Reed Simon, Honorable Louis Zavani, Mr. John Osher, Mr. Cesar Solano, Mr. Jimmy Smith, and Mr. Ken Barrow. To all those celebrating birthdays, we pray God's blessings will be upon you, not just for this birthday, but for all the remaining days of your lives. Happy birthday! In our prayers this morning, we continue to give Almighty God thanks for persons who have recovered from illness and surgery, and we continue to pray for healing and recovery for the following individuals. We remember and pray for Miss Judith, Miss Eileen, Miss Pauline, Miss Rose, Miss Grace, Miss Celine, Miss Maria, Miss Norma, Miss Mary, Miss Kim, and Miss Elaine. We pray for Miss Toya, Miss Marley, Miss Janet, Miss Beryl, Miss Zoila, Miss Lisa, Miss Justine, Miss Aislin, Miss Des, Miss Sylvia, and Miss Monica. We remember and pray for Miss Margaret, Miss Myrna, Miss Janice, Miss Dylan, Miss Alma, Miss Marlene, Miss Elizabeth, Miss Amelia, Miss Amy, Miss Molly, and Miss Nelita. We pray for Miss Betty, Miss Marta, Miss Marva, Miss Gloria, Miss Ruby, Miss Jessica, Miss Yolanda, Miss Althea, Miss Teresa, Miss Venantia, Miss Marie, and Miss Ruth. We pray for Miss Agnes, Miss Chanel, Miss Loretta, Miss Barbara, Miss Celestina, Miss Delvarine, Miss Lorraine, Miss LaShawn, Miss Glenda, Miss Salome, Miss Felicia, Miss Priscilla, Miss Joycelyn, Miss Alma, Miss Maud, Miss Elma, Miss Arlette, Miss Rosita, Miss Geraldine, Miss Myrtle, Miss Sonia, and Miss Matilda. In our prayers, we remember and pray for Miss Verily, Miss Carol, Miss Jasmine, Miss Allaire, Miss Nina, Miss Leonora, Miss Tanya, Miss Robin, Miss Jane, Miss Camille, Miss Deisha, Miss Fiona, Miss Louise, Miss Rita, Miss Lisa T, Miss Ulichi, Miss Joan, Miss Ismay, Miss Marcia, Miss Joyce, Miss Kieron, Miss Marie W, Miss Caroline, Miss Gretel, Miss Kellya, Miss Velina, Reverend Tilona, Miss Sharon, Miss Elva, Miss Nadia, Miss Eleanor, Miss Lynette, Miss Natalie, Miss Sheila, Miss Catherine, Miss Sandra, Miss Bernadine, Miss Debbie, Miss Tanisha, Miss Dominic, Reverend Linda, Michelle, Madine, Miss Charlene, Miss Del Vorin. We pray for Miss Irene, Miss Pat, Miss Michelle, Miss Sophie, Miss Julia, and Miss Angela, Miss Perla, Miss Anne, Miss Maisie, Miss Tracy, and Miss Julie P. We pray for Miss Dorothy B, Miss Susan, Miss Kimberly, Miss Shanice, Miss Merlene, Miss Dillis, Miss Tessa, Miss Megan, Miss Laurel, Miss Patricia, and Miss Hilda. In our prayers, we remember and pray for the following of our brothers. We pray for Mr. Zane, Mr. Larry, Mr. Kenrick, Mr. Wilfred, Mr. Marvin, Mr. Philip, Father Eric, Mr. Jeffrey, Mr. Tony, Mr. Gary, and Mr. Kemuel. We remember and pray for Mr. Dudley, Mr. Finley, Mr. Costa, Mr. Freddy, Mr. Dion, Mr. Charles, Mr. Edmundo, Mr. Ian, Mr. Belham, and Mr. Ewart. We remember and pray for Mr. Leroy Jr., Mr. Rupert, Mr. Enrique, Mr. Robert, Mr. Rodney, Mr. Ismael, Mr. Clement, Mr. Walter, Mr. Edgar Jr., Mr. Carlos, and Mr. Ion. We pray for Mr. Pablo, Mr. Dion, Mr. Alfred, Mr. Gilbert, Mr. Lindon, Mr. Mark, Mr. Enid, Mr. Clinton, Mr. Lewis, Mr. Sean, and Mr. Salvador. We pray for Father Constancio, Mr. Russell, Brian, Mr. Kurt, Mr. Donald, Sir Colton, Mr. Michael Samuels, Mr. Dennis, Mr. Brindell, Mr. Ambrose, Mr. Peter H., and Mr. Hubert. We remember and pray for Mr. Gustavo, Mr. Rodolfo, Mr. Lincoln, 
Mr. Gracie, Mr. James, Mr. Jamar, Mr. Jamir, Mr. Trevor, Mr. Chris, Mr. Ernest, and Father Mark. We pray for Mr. David, Mr. Carmen, Mr. Peter, Mr. Albert, and Mr. Warren. We pray for Mr. Richard, Mr. Irvin, Mr. Jervis, Mr. Omar, and Mr. Franz. We remember and pray for Mr. Lloyd, Mr. Kiro, and Mr. Devin, Mr. Aniki, Mr. Ivan, Mr. Ted, Mr. Paul, Bishop Curry, Mr. Maxwell, and the Bishop Wright. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who care for the infirmed, Remember and pray, especially for those who offer at-home care to individuals. We remember and pray for persons who work in our professional medical institutions, both private and public institutions. We pray for their protection and enablement. And we pray for all of our doctors, our nurses, our pharmacists, our radiologists, our lab technicians. We pray for those in the administrative offices. We pray for the cooks, the cleaners, and the athletes. And this week being Mental Health Awareness Week, we pray for all those who work in the mental health section of our health system. In our prayers, as we pray, we pray and remember for those who, for whatever reason, cannot bring themselves to pray for themselves. We pray for them, saying together, Heavenly Father, giver of life and health, Comfort and relieve your sick servants and give your power of healing to those who minister to their needs. That those for whom our that those for whom our prayers are offered may be strengthened in your weakness, have confidence in your loving care, and experience your healing grace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in, in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. In our prayers, we continue to pray for comfort for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Ricardo Ward, the family of Mr. Daniel Olivas, the family of Mr. Ivan Ramos, the family of Mr. Russell Tasha. We remember and pray for the family of Mr. Victor Marin, the family of Miss Ann Popper, the family of Miss Marge Messiah. We pray for the family of Mr. Hector Bailey, the family of baby Dan Danilo Solis, the family of Miss Lady Reed, the family of Mr. Gilbert Domingo, the family of Miss Shirley Philip, the family of Miss Glenis Poor, the family of Mr. Murphy Morales, the family of Mr. Peter Williams, and the family of Mr. Oscar Ramirez. We remember and pray for all those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, praying for God's comfort and peace to be upon you during this time of bereavement, and praying for return and rest to those who have died. In our prayers, we continue to pray for protection over our loved ones who are far away from us. We continue to remember and pray for our students studying overseas. We remember and pray for our loved ones assigned in the military overseas or away from home. We continue to pray for God's protection and provision over them at this time. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for those who are most vulnerable in our society. For the poor, the needy, the elderly, persons living in hospice care, persons living in situations of abuse of any kind, those who are homeless. We pray for persons struggling with mental health issues, persons dealing with health issues such as HIV and AIDS, lupus, MS, cancers of their various stages and kinds. We continue to remember and pray as well for those battling with mental health problems as well as those dealing with substance abuse issues and their related ailments. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the various branches of our security forces. We pray for our government and our leadership. We pray for the churches and the church leadership. We pray for the private sector and all persons in positions of public trust and authority, as well as for all non-governmental organizations involved in any form of humanitarian aid. In our prayers, we continue to remember and pray for the members of the international community. We remember and pray for those affected by the effects of war and civil unrest, those displaced due to wars and civil unrest. We continue to remember and pray for peace to reign in these war-stricken regions. We continue to remember and pray as well for protection for the international community against the ravages of natural disaster. Those especially who are still recovering from typhoons and hurricanes and those who are in the path of eminent weather systems. We continue to remember and pray for them, even as we pray for ourselves and our region 
for protection against the threat of civil unrest and wars, and for protection against the ravages of natural disaster. For the prayers of our hearts that our tongues cannot confess, we pray that Almighty God would hear our prayers. We conclude our intercessions by praying together. Almighty and eternal God, sanctify and govern our hearts and bodies in the ways of your laws and the works of your commandments, that under your protection now and ever we may be preserved in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. By means of announcement, brothers and sisters, I want to thank you so much for joining me for morning prayer. This morning, it is indeed a blessing and a privilege to be able to share morning prayer with you today. I again apologize for yesterday. It was beyond my control. There was nothing I could do about it. And I had to look to the prayer of St. Francis for yesterday to find peace in the fact that there are things that I can't control and things that I must allow God to be God in. Praise Jesus, we were able to get through today and have a wonderful time in prayer and worship. Mm -hmm. I want to remind you of our broadcast schedule for today. Following this broadcast, we have noonday prayers at midday, evening prayer at 5.30 and compline at 9 p.m. to close off the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's our schedule. I want to ask your prayers for the Belize Christian Movement, the Anglican Diocese of Belize Christian Movement. This um, weekend, we are going to be having Christian number 15. Mm -hmm. It will be Belize Christian number 15 as well as it will be Belize men's Christian number 2. Yes, last Christian was the first time that we separated the males from the females. And so this is the second time the males will be on their own. And we're excited about that indeed. Please continue to pray for the team that is working the weekend as well as all the candidates who will be making their Christian. Yeah, I marveled the other day in our Crucio setting when I realized that having done Belize Crucio number one, I'm one of the oldest Crucistas. I'm not the oldest person that has done Crucio. I'm one of the oldest Crucistas in our diocese. It's interesting to hear myself say something like that. Mm. But please continue to keep us in prayer. Um, Over this weekend, your prayer palancas um, is an important thing in assuring that the Spirit of God continues to move in and through. The Christian movement. Those are all my notices for today, I believe. And so what we're going to do now is we're going to wrap up. We're going to wrap up with our prayer of dedication, followed by the grace, the dismissal, and then our final hymn. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our paths, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and to serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Brothers and sisters, may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to close off this morning with one entitled, this one entitled, Beauty for brokenness. I chose this one because I've been finding out in our community that there are a lot of hurting persons. I did a wonderful presentation on Monday for the um, Southern Regional Hospital on Mental Health and Spirituality. And it is interesting that there are so many people in need, but because of stigma, they are afraid to come forward. May we continue to be channels of peace and healing for those who are most in need of God's mercy. And of course, May we be an agent of change that brings God's beauty for the brokenness so many are experiencing. I do pray you have a beautiful day today. Please do all you can to keep yourself and your family safe. Until tomorrow morning, same place, same time. God bless. Bye for now.
Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful morning. It's another beautiful day. I had to get up and pray and say thank you, Lord, for another day. Good morning, my neighbor, good morning. The how everybody did do this wonderful The Lord just brought me through the 